In this problem, what we're told to do is to find the tension in the wire AB and the magnitude of the force Q while keeping the system at equilibrium. So there are sliders A and B which are restrained to move in the directions of, of these poles. So there, there are actually reaction forces acting upon both bodies that restrain them to move in the Y direction for B and in the X direction for B. And similarly for A, the, the body cannot move in the X or Z direction. It could only simply move in the Y direction. So we gotta keep those in mind when doing the free body diagram. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually define this length. Because we were given the lengths of A in the Y direction and the lengths of X in the, or lengths of B in the X direction, but we're not given the length of B in the Z direction. And we're gonna need that later. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna define a triangle right here. So we're gonna define this triangle. And what's important about this triangle is that it's a right triangle. And we know that because we know that this pole or B lies on in the plane and we know that this vertical distance is strictly in the Y direction so and we know that the Y axis is, is perpendicular to the XZ plane so by that logic this is a right triangle so I'm going to draw out that right triangle so it's easier to see so we have this right triangle which is going to be um, 155 millimeters in this direction and this is going to be 525 millimeters in the hypotenuse. So what we can use is we can define this angle as the arc cosine. So theta is the arc cosine of 155 over 525. So what I get is 72.828 degrees. Now we're going to define another triangle in this diagram. So this is a this is another right triangle because we know that the pole is perpendicular to the x-axis and we know that x is perpendicular to that pole. So we can define this right triangle right here. And then I'm going to define this bottom length as h and we're going to use that as the hypotenuse of the other triangle. So we're going to draw this triangle. So this is going to be 200, milli or 200 millimeters. This is going to be H, and we're trying to look for this length Z. So we could find H by using trig in this triangle. So H is actually 525 sine of theta. So what H equals is 501.597 millimeters. And now we could use the Pythagorean theorem of this triangle to find um, Z. So we could say H squared equals Z squared plus 200 squared. And then by some algebra, we could say that z equals h squared minus 200 squared, all this square rooted. So what we get for z is 460 millimeters. So now that we have that defined, we're going to have to find the tension in this cable. So what we have been doing before is defining position vectors and then finding directional vectors and then converting those directional vectors into unit vectors and then using that to find the tension force in the cable. So first thing we're going to do is define the position vectors. So this is going to be R1 and this is going to be R2. So what we're going to do is call this R2 and we're going to find R1 and R2 down here. So R1 is going to be positive 200 millimeters or I'm going to use 0.2. We're going to convert these to meters for convenience for later. So this is going to be 0.2. And the reason why I'm using meters is because Newton's, uh, the SI unit for Newton's is in um, meters, so we have to use meters when we multiply numbers. So that's why I'm converting to meters. There's no y direction for the r1 position vector, so then all we have is plus 0.46 in the k hat direction. And then R2 can be defined similarly. So R2 strictly points in the J direction. So that's going to be 0.155J. And now we can use these vectors to define a directional vector. So it doesn't matter which direction in this problem to define your tension. So I'm going to define my tension going from here to here. So that's going to be RAB.
So RAB is going to be R1 minus R2. So what we get is 0 0.20i minus 0.155j plus 0.46k. So I'm going to define the unit vector in the same direction. So that'll be UAB. And what that's going to equal is 0 0.200 minus 0.155j plus 0.46k. And we're going to divide by the magnitude of that vector. So it'll be 0.2 squared plus 0.155 squared plus 0.46 squared, all that square rooted. So after plugging this stuff in my calculator, we get a unit vector that points in whatever direction this is, which is along the cable. So we can use that to, to define the tension force. So T is actually equal to the magnitude, magnitude of T times the unit vector UAB. So the next step, what we're going to do is draw the free body diagrams for A and B. And we're going to use those static equilibrium problems to relate the tension force to Q and the tension force to P so that we could find both Q and T. So I'm going to start with the tension force or the free body diagram for A. So what we know is that this body cannot move in the X direction and this body can't move in the Z direction. So there are re reaction forces in those directions. And then this body could freely move in the Y direction, which has an applied force in the Y direction. And the tension points in that arbitrary direction will be defined for the unit vector AB. So I'm going to draw that free body diagram right here. So this is going to be the free body diagram for A. So we have that. And then later I'm going to do the free body diagram for B, if I could draw it. So it looks something like that. And we said that there's an applied force for A, so that's going to be P. And then it cannot move in um, the Z direction, so there's going to be a reaction force, R, A, Z. And it cannot move in the X direction, so there's going to be a reaction force, R, A, X. See, now you could define R, R, A, Z in the negative direction if you find that convenient for you. Um, but you, you could choose any direction that you want because um, as long as you're just um, consistent with your signs within your equations and the convention that you drew, um, you should be fine and still get the same answer. So the last force acting upon this object is going to be T, which points in that direction. So for body B, we have the same, um, same issue. Um, we, the body cannot move in the X direction and it cannot move in the y direction. So there's reaction forces in those directions. So there's going to be a reaction force going this way, RBX, and there's a reaction force going directly upward, which is RBY. And then there's a, an applied force going in this direction, in the z direction, called Q. And then there's a tension force being pulled in this direction, T. So now I'm going to just apply the equations of equilibrium to each body. So I'm going to call this body 1 and this body 2. So the sum of the forces for body 1, so body 1 in the x direction is simply Rax. And then the only other force acting in the x direction is the component of T in the x direction. And just remember that we define the unit vector a b going in the same direction as t as drawn in this free body diagram so we don't have to include any kind of negative sign to uh, fix the direction of the unit vector so we can just keep the the signs that are generated from the unit vector that we calculated within the equation and we simply just add it all together and set it equal to zero so for the x direction for t that's going to be plus 0.381 t and set that equal to zero and then we can do the same thing for the sum of the forces in the y, which is going to be p, positive p, because we define our axes like this. And this is z, this is x, and y. And where the arrows point are the positive direction. So p is pointing in the y direction, which is positive. And then the only other force is the y component of the tension force. So that's going to be negative 0.295t and set that equal to 0.
And the last one we're going to do is the sum of the forces in the x direction, or in the z direction, my bad. So this is a z. Um, that's going to be raz, which points in the positive direction, and then the component of t. So that's going to be plus 0.876t equals 0. And now we repeat the process for the second body. So this is the sum of the forces in the x direction for the second body. So it's going to be RBX, which points in the positive direction, and then T. So for this free body diagram, it's actually pointing from B to A. So what we have to do is a, we have to compensate for that by multiplying the unit vector by a negative 1. So that we have a unit vector pointing from, a, uh, from B to A. So what I'm saying is that U A or UBA which is the direction that this tension force is pointing in this free body diagram is equal to negative u a b so we have to account for that by multiplying by a negative sign so uh, the sum of the forces in x direction so it's r b x and then t so we have to multiply by a negative so it'll be negative 0 0.381 t and we set that equal to zero and then we do the same thing for the other direction so sum of the forces in the y That'll be R B Y, and then that'll be plus 0.295 T, and set that equal to zero. And then lastly, we do the sum of the forces in the Z direction. So that's going to be um, Q, which is positive, and then minus 0.876 T, which equals zero. So the most important equations that we're gonna use to solve this problem is actually this equation right here and this equation right here because we're only asked to look for Q and T all the reaction forces are arbitrary for this problem we do not need them to solve this problem so we're going to use these equations to relate Q T and P and solve for Q and T so we're going to start with this equation so this is going to be P equals 0.295 Point two, okay, point two nine five t, and we can solve for the tension force by dividing by point two nine five. So this would be t equals p over two nine five, and we said that p is three forty one newtons. So this is where we need to solve for t. So this is going to be. So after plugging my calculator, I get T equals 100 or 1,155.932 newtons. And then we could use this equation to solve for Q. So Q equals 0.876 or 87% of T. So this is going to be 115.932. This is a 5, my bad. And then what we get from that answer is that Q equals 1012.597. So our answers, let me rewrite these more clearly so that you can see them. So T equals 1155.932 newtons, and Q is. 1012.597 newtons. So let me quickly recap of what we just did. Um, so we basically found the geometry of, of this uh, system to find this length, which we use for the position vectors. We define the position vectors from going from the origin to B and from the origin to A, and then we use those position vectors to find the directional vector that points from A to B. And then we use that directional vector to define the unit vector AB to find the tension force T. So once we found the tension force, we defined it in this direction for this free body diagram. And we, we later drew free body diagrams for both bodies, um, A and B. And we defined the tension force going in this direction and in this direction. But when we wrote the equations of of static equilibrium, we define t in a different direction, so we have to accommodate for that by multiplying by a negative for uh, the, the free body diagram too. And then we simply went through the equations and solved for p, I mean solved for q and t.
So that is the basic summary of what we just did.